Hi, and thanks for joining. In this video, I'm going to go over how to create a basic OpenAI assistant with the Python client library, and then add a Gradio web user interface. I very frequently create simple bots for temporary projects. Sometimes when I'm doing that just for myself, I can use the OpenAI playground interface. It's a little bit simpler. Just for group projects, uh, if you can do it quickly, super helpful for any project to be able to spin up a, a custom GPT to help you and your team members and without the overhead of, of building a, a more significant web interface. So let's go ahead and, and jump in and see how we can do this real quick and easy with Grady. I created a basic Python notebook if anyone would like to follow along with this exercise. Saved it on my GitHub repository. So if you go to github.com slash afuel slash notebooks and then come to the main page for notebooks, uh, then you can click on this folder called Assistant. And here we have a notebook file, OpenAI Basic Assistant with Gradio. Well, you can download that file and run it in a Jupyter Notebook, or you can load it up to Colab and run it there, uh, wherever you prefer to run your Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, this is just a standard format. Uh, I've already got a container spun up with Jupyter Notebook running. So you can see this is running here on localhost. Let me make this bigger. Running Jupyter Notebooks is very easy if you want to run it locally. Uh, all you need to do is uh, you have Python create a standard Python virtual environment. Uh, you could, if you're not sure how to do that, you can just ask ChatGPT or any of the bots. They all know how to do it. <laughs> uh, and then you do the command pip install a Jupyter. And, uh, and that will get you Jupyter Notebook. Once you've installed it, you run the command Jupyter Notebook. And that l launches up a Jupyter Notebook server. And you'll need to make sure that you save this file from the same hard drive somewhere uh, where you run that Jupyter Notebook server and then you can locate it and I go ahead and load it up and it'll load up just like it's running for me here. Now, when you're in a Jupyter Notebook, uh, if you don't already know, you can hit Shift Enter. It's one of the ways to just execute what's in that cell. And while it's running, you see right here where I have my cursor, you see how this says number one. That indicates this was the first thing to run. While it's running, it will have an asterisk instead. And so if you're not sure if, if one of these is still running or if it's totally done, you want to make sure that this has the number uh, that before you proceed to the next cell, you don't want to do this while it still has the asterisk. Uh, you want to wait for that to complete before you go to the next. So the first thing we did here is install our, our dependencies. And uh, next we instantiate the OpenAI key. So I actually already uh, went through uh, this one. And so if you just hit shift enter, it'll open up a field here and you can paste in your open API key. I did that off camera because I didn't want to share my open API key with everybody. And then uh, this third box here initializes the open AI client. That's our fourth cell that I have in this notebook. It adds some functionality so that if you've created an assistant with this once, uh, with the same code base, uh, then next time you want to come and, and set up your client, you may not want it to create an assistant again. You can see on my left-hand side, this is my uh, OpenAI assistance account. So you can go straight to OpenAI's website, log in, and if you go on the left-hand side here, platform.openai.com, right, and log in, then you can see you can find your assistance playground over here, and uh, you can see all of your assistants listed here. I have a, a number of assistants listed here, including one that I created from this specific Python file. And so when I uh, created uh, this assistant, it will use this particular code here to go ahead and save the assistant ID to a file called assistantid.txt. And so when you run this notebook again, uh, it's going to look on your local hard drive from the same folder that you're running your notebook in, uh, and it will look to see if you have this file. If you have this file, it's not going to uh, create a new assistant. It will say, if there's an existing assistant ID, it's going to, to use the retrieval function within this library to go ahead and retrieve an existing assistant and load that up. So you don't end up creating bunches and bunches of assistants. 
Otherwise, it will go ahead and create a client. Uh, this math tutor prompt here, this is straight out of the OpenAI documentation, just to use as an example. You can adjust the instructions and uh, the name to your preferences. So that way it creates an assistant. It creates the assistant you want. That's a very you know simple change to make. Um, so I click into this code block and I'll hit okay, shift enter. And we can see that it ran. And, I, and it has that number there, so I know it's already done running. Now, this creates a function to handle my uh, query and I'll tie it into the, the Gradio interface here. Uh, so my function's called handle query. So when you're creating an assistant, it's not the same uh, as when you're just creating a basic chatbot where you're just querying GPT-4 or some model directly. You need to create a thread and then you can attach your uh, assistant to the thread, and then you create an execution of that thread. And, and then every time that you uh, ask an additional question, it appends uh, your message to the thread, and then it triggers it to run. And that's where the, the assistance API works. So this logic is to create uh, that thread and to be able to, to trigger an execution when you click the button on your Gradio interface. Yeah. Make sure you're clicked into the cell and hit shift enter. And we can see that ran. And the last part is just initializing the Gradio interface. One of the things I really like about the Gradio interface is that you have this option to add a value here that I have in the notebook called share equals true. Depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want to have that. And you can go ahead and delete that out of here, and it will go ahead and run on localhost without that. Um, but one of the things I like is if I make a, a chatbot that I want to share with team members. Uh, Gradio has a free option to where it will load up on a public URL for 72 hours. Now, keep in mind it is a public URL. So once you uh, run your chatbot on a Gradio interface, if you've done this share equals two, that public URL will be accessible to anybody who has the link. You would not want to put anything sensitive uh, if you're going to include that share equals true value. So if you want to run this um, privately, this, this is connecting to OpenAI, but this is the OpenAI commercial API service. This isn't the chat GPT client. Most of the news about uh, OpenAI potentially leaking your data or training on your data, that refers to that chat GPT client. There are some options with that client to have it not train on your desk if you've configured it accordingly and, and paid. Uh, but for the assistance API that I'm using here for making your standard API queries, there's standard contractual language around it. I'm not an expert on it. Before you want to verify anything with that contractual language, make sure that you check with your legal representation or review it to whatever satisfies you. But my understanding is, is that your use of these, the OpenAI APIs is similar to any other commercial service where they do not train on the data and you have legal protection from them potentially misusing your data. Now, some people don't trust OpenAI. Whether you choose to trust them or not is up to you. But again, this uses this is this uses the commercial OpenAI API service and uh, should have some better protections and safety measures to keep your data private. <clears throat> And now we can see uh, that we have a public URL. You can use the chatbot client right here in the notebook. It works fine. You, or you can go directly to that link. I'll just run a sample query here to show you that this works. Uh, and we can see here that it's giving us our information in this nice web user interface. If I want to go to this public link, I can go ahead and just click on it. And it'll open another tab here. And I can see that this is public. Now, one thing I do want to address is I usually will load uh, files into this assistant to provide retrieval augmented generation. As there's not much of a reason to create an assistant if you're not going to do something with it. Uh, you can give it some basic prompt engineering, and for some basic use cases, just giving it instructions might be sufficient. But in general, I don't see much difference in behavior than if I just were to go straight to a regular 
chatbot API and tell it in the prompt how I want it to behave. Uh, I think if I'm going to use an assistant, I usually only will do it if I'm either giving the chatbot a tool or I'm giving it files. So that way, I mean, if I'm working on a particular project, there might be some technical reference material that I can give it to where it'll have some uh, knowledge about the project that I'm working on. Now, you can, uh, with uh, the Python library, upload files from code, and you can also like add a file upload thing through Gradio that will upload it through code. Uh, but I don't do that with this. I'm using the Gradio interface here because it's simple and it's quick. Um, and I find that the OpenAI Assistance API can be a little flaky with file uploads, uh, especially from code, but even when you're using the browser. What I like to do for these cases is I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll create the assistant with uh, code uh, and then I'll go into the OpenAI Assistant's GUI and I can view the assistant here. So we can see here I've got this math tutor. I created this on a earlier run of this uh, Python file. You can see that when I ran this again the second time it correctly found and loaded the existing ID that it had so it didn't end up creating a bunch of additional assistance for me. So now when I want to upload files, I'll go ahead and click here and open up this dialog here. And you want to make sure that retrieval is turned on. It, there's no point in adding files if you uh, don't have retrieval turned on. And when you do return, have retrieval turned on, it will charge you. Uh, the documented rate is 20 cents per gigabit per day. Again, retrieval augmented generation. Just that feeds the bot the context from your files when you uh, ask it a query so that way it can have the information from your files and, and have some information about the questions that you're going to be asking that it knows is good solid information so if you're maybe working on a technical blog about a product you might feed the chatbot the documentation and when it goes in and you ask questions about the project that you're working on the uh, chatbot will find the relevant context from the documentation and transparently feed it to the chatbot so the chatbot has that known good knowledge and it's less likely to hallucinate or make up things if it doesn't find the right information or even compared to a web search you can give the bots web search and hope it finds the right information but if you're working with something where you know that you have a good source of information it's a lot more reliable to give it that than it would be to like rely on having the bot do a web search or something like that this is going to charge you per day and I don't know how that breaks down. I know it's uh, the documentation says, I think, 20 cents per gig per day. Now, if you have a small fraction of a gig, I assume it charges you the relative uh, portion, but I don't know uh, exactly how that breaks down if you have less than a gig worth, worth of data here, uh, if they have a, a particular minimum amount that it will charge you or something. This UI can also be very flaky about adding files. So when you add files here, you'll want to make sure you do it one at a time. And after each file upload, you want to make sure that it, it, it finishes saving. So I'll just put a Word document that I have here just for example purposes. And you'll see down here on the, the very bottom of this dialog where it says updated, it's uploading that now. You can see down there where it says saving. And uh, once it finishes saving, it'll go back to say updated again. Now, I've had a lot of problems with that. If I've tried to upload multiple files, even if they're smaller files, a lot of times it'll say failed to save here. Sometimes when I'm not near the maximum file limits for what you can upload here, even if I just have smaller files, sometimes it'll just fail to save. It's a bit hit and miss. Uh, I like to use this interface when I'm uploading files. I do one at a time and I ch check this. Now, I think a better way would be if you are making a longer lasting application, you might put a file upload button in your client side logic. You can do that with Gradio. But the only reason I'm using, I'm using Gradio in this case is again, for quick, easy, temporary projects. Over time, I might make or I might find an open source tool that has a little bit more robust client functionality. And if you were doing that, then you can build some logic in your client side code to make it a much more durable and, and persistent file upload with retries and, and so on to, to help ensure that you can simply upload files. So we saw in this video how to use a Python client library to create an OpenAI assistance. I shared a notebook and you can find it on, on github.com 
slash A-F-E-W-E-L slash notebooks, and it's in the assistance folder. You can um, download that uh, notebook to instantiate a, a basic agent with a Gradio web user interface. I recommend using the OpenAI platform's interface for assistance to upload files, so make it a little more durable, unless you're going to make a, a more significant client UI, in which case you could make a more durable file upload utility through there that'll have better persistence and ensure that files get uh, uploaded, letting the uh, code handle the failures for you. And so that's it for this video. I hope you have fun with your assistance, and thanks for joining.